So in this video we will look at an example of solving a second order initial value problem using the Laplace transform method. One thing to note is that using the Laplace transform we can only solve initial value problems. We can't write down general solutions. That's one difference in this technique versus um, others All right, for solving differential equations we've seen. I'm just going to bring up um, a portion of a video that we have linked out to. It's in this uh, first section on the Laplace transform. It's the first video and I've got it kind of paused where I want it to go just to remind you of the process for finding or using the Laplace transform to solve differential equations. And it's in this uh, arrow at the bottom, this procedure. So you have your differential equation, which is an initial value problem. You're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides and then during that process we're going to have to also enforce the initial conditions or substitute in the initial conditions. That's going to lead to an algebraic equation in the variable s which we're going to then solve for the Laplace transform of y and then to find the answer to our initial problem, the original differential equation, we're going to use inverse Laplace transforms. So again the Laplace transform converts it to an algebraic equation and essentially just takes a differential equation and we can solve it using algebraic methods. All right, and before we get to that, I just want to remind you briefly of some of the Laplace transforms that we've seen by looking at my table of Laplace transforms. Now, on the left side of this table, you're seeing y of t. So these are the functions of t, all right? And on the other side, we have the functions, of, which I'm calling capital Y, of s, all right? So these things are related via the Laplace transform. So meaning, by taking the Laplace transform, of say e to the a t, we would get 1 over s minus a. And we're going to use um, the opposite of that in the initial value problem as well by going and saying, all right, if I take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a, we will get e to the a t. So what we want to really think about is there's a kind of a two-way street. These two functions, the function of t and the function of s, are related via the Laplace transform and its inverse. All right, now the one we're going to use in this video is the ones are the top two. So we need to recognize, right, that the Laplace transform of e to the a t is equal to 1 over s minus a, and vice versa, that the f a function of the form 1 over s minus a is related via the Laplace transform or its inverse to e to the a t. All right, and the next one is constants. Constant functions, are the, what we've seen is using the linearity and the fact that the Laplace transform of the constant function 1 is 1 over s. The fact that we can pull constants out told us that the Laplace transform of a constant, which was like a constant times 1, now moving the constant out, we would get k times Laplace transform of 1, which is 1 over s. All right, so if we have a Laplace transform of a constant, it'll be that constant times 1 over s those two things are going to be applicable in our first example along with our derivative facts that we talked about in the last video. All right, so Laplace transform of the first derivative is s times Laplace transform of y minus y of zero. In the video I'm going to write it using capital Y just for simpler writing. And then the Laplace transform of the second derivative is s squared times Laplace transform of y minus s times y of zero minus y prime of zero. All right, let's get to work. Okay, so for this example, our first step then is going to be to take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. So we'll apply the Laplace transform to that. All right, now what we're going to get then is using the linearity, we can do this term by term and pull constants out. So it's the Laplace transform of the second derivative plus three times the Laplace transform of the first derivative plus two times the Laplace transform of y. So on the left hand side I applied the fact that we can do Laplace transforms term by term and constant factors come along for the ride and that's going to equal the Laplace transform of 8 on the right hand side. Okay now we're just going to start substituting in what we know on the right hand side that's 8 times 1 over s. So we're going to actually put in what the Laplace transform is. Nothing to do with the third term. For the first and second terms we're going to apply the derivative facts. All right, so for the first one, the Laplace transform of the second derivative is equal to s squared times the Laplace transform of y 
minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. So it turns into those three terms right there. All right, and for the second term, that's going to turn into 3 times, now we got to be a little careful here, use a big parenthesis or a bracket, the Laplace transform of y prime, the first derivative is equal to s times the Laplace transform of y minus y of 0. And then we still have this last term here, 2 times the Laplace transform of y. And all of that is going to equal the left-hand side, which its Laplace transform is 8 times 1 over s. All right, now for the rest of this writing, instead of writing script L of y every time, I'm going to replace that by capital Y of s. All right, just to, for simplicity here of writing. Okay, so rewriting this, and then we're also going to do two things in the next step. We're going to distribute the 3 through the parentheses there. Well, let's let's enforce the initial conditions actually first. So right, let's substitute in what y of 0 and y prime of 0 are equal to here, and their y of 0 was 1, and y prime of 0 is negative 1, so let's substitute those in. So the equation is going to be s squared times the Laplace transform of y, which we're writing as capital Y, minus s times y of 0, which is 1, minus y prime of 0, which is negative 1, plus 3 times s times the Laplace transform of y, which we're writing as capital Y of s, minus y of 0, which is 1, plus 2, times Laplace transform of y, of, of y equals 8 times 1 over s. We'll just write as 8 over s. Okay, in the next step, let's just simplify this a little bit. We're going to distribute the 3 through the parentheses and do a little bit of simplification here. So s squared times Laplace transform of y minus s plus 1 then. And then we distribute the 3 through. It's going to be plus 3 s times the Laplace transform of s minus 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2 times the Laplace transform of s is equal 8 over s. All right, now our goal is going to be we're at the stage where we're going to solve for y of s. That's what our next step is going to be. So we're going to combine these like terms together because our next goal is to isolate the Laplace transform of s. Okay, so factoring that out from those terms that we underlined, what are we left with on what, what do we have on the uh, left side? We would have s squared plus 3s plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y. And then combining the other terms that we have there, we then have minus s and then negative 3 plus 1 will give us minus 2 is equal to 8 over s. Okay, and then we're just going to, again, algebraically isolate y, capital Y of s, which is the Laplace transform. So the next thing we'll do is add s, add 2 to both sides. A lot of writing here. All right, so then substitute in. So what do we end up seeing here? We got s squared plus 3s plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y is going to equal 8 over s plus the quantity s plus 2. All right, now next step is going to be we're going to divide both sides by our factor in front here. So we're going to divide both sides by s squared plus 3s plus 2. And we can't forget to divide each term on each side by that. So over here we got to divide both of these terms and treating the, s, the 8 over s and then the s plus 2 term as two separate terms there. Okay, now rewriting that, we've accomplished the goal of isolating y of s, and then we need to go through a little bit more work to do the inverse Laplace transform. All right, now when we divide a fraction by a, a quantity, that's like multiplying by its reciprocal, so that first term we're going to write as 8 divided by, flipping that up and multiplying, we would get the s squared plus 3s plus 2 coming in the denominator of that fraction and then we would get plus the quantity s plus 2 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. Alright now most of the time I find it simplest to 
add these fractions together on the right side before we go through the partial fractional breakdown and then get to the inversion. So what we need to do here is recognize that our LCD, if we want to do that, we would have to multiply this, the factor that's missing in the second denominator would be S. So we have to multiply both top and bottom by S to add these quantities together. Now, what would that give us? Capital Y of S would equal 8 plus, distributing the S through the parentheses in the numerator there, it would be S squared plus 2S over S times S squared plus 3S plus 2. All right, I'm just going to rewrite that a little bit, and then we've got some work to do. So I'm just going to rewrite that in descending order on top. And then we are going to need to do a partial fractional breakdown here so that we can do the inverse Laplace transform. Now, what we want to do to find the partial fractional decomposition is to factor that quadratic expression, because we can here, that can be factored as the linear into linear factors s plus 2 and s plus 1. All right, so it's a product of two binomial linear factors. All right, because we're looking for factors of 2 that add up to 3 when we look at that expression there. I forgot to plus sign, I just added it there. Okay, so now we have to go through and do the partial fractional decomposition. Okay, so in doing that, what does that mean? We need to rewrite this rational expression that we have in terms of the variable s here as a sum of fractions. All right, one with denominator s. All right, we have all linear factors in the denominators, and all those linear factors are multiplicity one plus some other number we're going to call b over s plus two plus some other number, let's call capital C, times S plus 1. All right, and then we need to go through the process of finding these numbers, A and B and C. All right, I'm just going to remind you of how that goes. All right, so in this next step, what we're going to do is multiply both sides by the LCD to clear the fractions out. All right, now, I'm not going to be able to fit this work all into this video, so I'm going to Stop this video here and we'll pick it up in the second part of this video.